the most important element of a marriage? Agreement, A. B, love. C, communication. You missed one. D, respect. Agreement, love, communication. D, respect. Yes. Love, thank you very much. Can you please uh, help pass that microphone around? Love, what's your reason for saying it's love? Okay, thank you very much. Some people say love is not enough, though. So where does that place us? Um, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyone else? Sir, yeah. Yeah, to my own is agreement. Agreement, yes. Yeah, what the reason is, when we look at the scripture, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's love. That, that love he's referring to if there is no agreement between the two parties, the love will not exist. And of course, the, the, the agreement here is you have to take yourself equally. You don't say, I am the head of the family. I can do whatever I want to do. There Push must be the agreement person. between okay. the two. Okay. That is when everything will move forward. Otherwise, there's going to be stagnation. Thank you, sir. So you said love. You are right. You said um, agreement you are right but you know th both answers are, are right but they they still thrive on something ma can i have your answer okay um i feel communication Why because you... where there is no communication there is no agreement thank you when there is no agreement there is no love thank you now when you communicate like when you're getting married it's like two individuals coming together from different background and you know some kids grew up in some kind of home when they have those traumas and all that. So a lot of them bring these baggages into marriages and it ends up making everything overturn. <laughs> yeah. So when you communicate, okay, like, like setting boundaries, oh, my love, I don't like this thing you do. I don't like this thing you do. It will give that, the other person that open up their heart for them to love you more. And that's where agreement comes in. Because mm. when you guys don't come together to communicate, there is no way agreement is going to take place. That's right. So communication first, before love and agreement and respect and or any other thing can come into play. Thank you very much. And even God had to communicate. The Bible says, come now, let us reason together. God could not even express his love without communication. Amen. Amen. So you're right to an extent. My sister, you are right to an extent, Brother Jerry. And anyone that thinks is respect, you are also right to an extent. But all this thrive on the wheels of, on the wheels of Russia and Ukraine. There's a war. The only thing that can settle that war is communication. They still have to sit and discuss. Amen, somebody. When teachers or lecturers or workers go on strike, it's a way of communicating. When the husband is not talking to the wife, it's a way of communicating, passing an information and saying, I actually don't like this. You need to change. Amen? Somebody say communication. Quiz number two. Okay, let's clap our hands. Let's clap for these guys. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. Thank you, Brother Jerry. Thank you, Statina. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. It's not easy to stand and speak, so thank you for speaking up. Number two, what singular element is necessary for building a healthy home according to scriptures? Money, a counselor, counselor there, pardon me, I think I made that error, should be SCE, I believe. Wisdom, understanding. Money, a counselor, wisdom, understanding. What is necessary to build? If you haven't spoken, sir, um, Pastor K is here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says a wise woman builds her home, the fool pull it down with her own hand. Wisdom from the man, from the woman. When we have enough wisdom, we can manage because there will be trouble. There will be crisis. Yes, sir. No one is immune from all those things. Yes, they sir. They will happen. Uh, but with wisdom, 
Yes, sir. We can manage our finance. Yes, sir. No matter how little or how much. With wisdom, we can manage our error, our mistake. We can, so we need wisdom. We should just pray for wisdom. You can't find any perfect or ideal or whatever you are looking for. It's wisdom. We manage, you can manage the beauty or whatever. You can manage when we have wisdom. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Put your hands together. Anyone has another answer? Okay, Brother Jerry, let's hear you, sir. My own opinion is understanding. Mm -hmm. Because it is only understanding between the two parties that will establish wisdom in the family. It is only understanding between the two parties that will create a way of making money. It is only understanding within the parties, the two parties, that will bring a, a forward in the, I mean, in the family. I speak under uh, with, I mean, I speak under uh, experience. In my marriage, I think I'm 22, getting to 23 years of marriage today. And I try to tell you that if there is no understanding between the parties, if no one can say to you, what I'm trying to say, even third party, even your pastor cannot settle you and your husband if there is no understanding and agreement between the two parties. Thank you, that sir. That is just what I'm just trying to Thank say. Thank you, sir. Put your hands together for him. Okay. Does anybody think money is the answer? Does anyone think money is the answer? Okay, if you think money is the answer, maybe you are in my class. Felix, who's lifting their hands there? Money. Money. Okay, wait, before you make your comment. Money, money, money. Okay, no one is talking money. Okay, how about a counselor? Thank you. There are counselors, marriage counselors, experts. Their marriages are not working. And sometimes they actually give good advice. Because their marriages are not working does not mean that they cannot give good counsel. But we must be wise who we also listen to. Amen? Like I usually say, having a good marriage does not mean you are a good person. Having a bad marriage does not mean you are a bad person. Coming from a broken home does not mean you are an outcast. It just means that God is able to do extraordinary things with your life and make you into a divine advertising tool. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So, according to scriptures, because if you listen to what I said, I said, according to the Bible, what is the answer? I'll read for you. In Proverbs chapter 24, Verse 3. I read, okay, we'll all read together so that we know the answer together. Proverbs 24, verse 3. Are we there? If we could have a good, not KJV translation would be wonderful, but if that's what we have, that's okay. Proverbs. Okay, let's read together after two with your big loud voices. One, two, go. A house is built by wisdom. So, KJV says, by wisdom is a house built. So, if you're going to build your home, build your family, this is God speaking, your maker and my maker. Like I always use the example of my wonderful Huawei phone. If you like top down on my phone, I don't care. This is the best phone as far as I'm concerned until somebody buys me iPhone what? 14. Let's go to iPhone 15, right? Amen. So, can you imagine you being wiser than the manufacturer of this phone? Can you imagine you explaining and telling the person and saying, you actually don't know what you made? Is that possible? So, if God is saying a house, a home can be built by wisdom, then we have to accept it because he originated marriage. He started two institutions. Number one, the marriage institution. Number two, the church. Praise God. Jesus came, set up the church. God made Adam and Eve set up the marriage institution. Shout hallelujah. So by wisdom, a house is built. 
If you do not have wisdom, you cannot build. Even communication, you still have to do with wisdom. Praise God. Quiz number three. Quiz number three. Somebody learning something this morning. Shout, I'm learning. Somebody say, I'm picking up something. Some good things. Amen. Okay. Once your home is built, what element do you use to ensure it remains built? Insurance. God bless you. I owe you a high five. Insurance. Number one, A, fasting and prayer, being emphatic, listening to other people's experiences, because I actually watch movies to, to learn, so you could listen to other people's experiences. Number D, understanding, E, sex and romance. Okay, so once the house is built, the marriage is standing, by what? How can you make sure it remains standing? Let's say you know that your marriage is on a cruise. You know when you're flying in the air and you're on autopilot, everything is good. How do you make sure it just keeps going and you don't crash? How? Let's say there's a turbulence all of a sudden. What does the pilot do? Okay, anyone, don't be afraid. Just talk to me. Fasting and prayer. If you say fasting and prayer, can I see your hand? Okay, if you say being emphatic and saying this is what I want and that's how it is, you're on your own. If you, that one is on your, if, if, you know, in marriage, you have to be like, hey, baby, I know this is what you want, but, you know, let's just reach an agreement. If you say this is what I want and that's it, the person is just going to go like, okay, you do your thing, I do my thing. We don't want that in our home. Say, praise God. Being emphatic, No. Okay, listening to other people's experiences or watching movies, for example. I watch movies to learn from people, you know, those storylines. Sometimes you learn from them. If you're in that, number C. D. Some people say, E, if there's no sex and romance, your marriage is broken. Dr. Femi says some people don't need that. Wow, interesting. <laughs> That's the oil of the marriage. Amen. Amen. Okay, Sister Tina, what's your answer? D. No, I feel A, um, C is 50-50, then D. You feel A is the thing. answer? No. Oh. Like all of the above except B. But C is 50-50 in the sense that fasting and prayer comes into play. When there is a, a, a little problem in the marriage that you know your wisdom alone cannot carry, you resolve to pray to God and fasting. God, give me the wisdom and understanding to go through this. Show me the way. I rely not only on my own wisdom and understanding. Then see, if you, it's 50 50. Because <laughs> my dad will always tell you your ear should be like a filter. It's not everything that comes in that should stay. At least some <laughs> stupid parts should go off through this place and you retain the ones that are really necessary. necessary. Then the understanding is assured. If you don't understand your partner, you don't understand the situation, you don't understand. Nobody has got it all figured out, especially in marriage. It's work. <laughs> you need to work. So in terms of understanding, you guys should understand yourselves. And this sex and romance, ah, no, you got it now. So which one are you tending towards most? I think I'm reckoning on those, um, the ones I listed. Well, C is 50-50. No, which one? One, one. One. It's not multiple answers. Ah, one them, answer. All of them, the strings are attaching each other. So Okay, I need somebody that would say one answer, one answer, one. Just one answer. What's your answer? Just one answer and tell me the reason. My own is the understanding mm -hmm. because the thing is, um, we, I believe that if couple understand each other, it will be difficult for another person to even meddle him. Like, because I can't imagine myself listening to other people because sometimes I used to say this thing that look for what works in your marriage and follow it. Because some people, their partner might like them kneeling down to serve their food. Me, my own partner might not like it. There is, there is a point. Ma, sorry, I understand. Now, the reason for choosing to understand because of our time is... Yeah. Yeah, it's because if you have understanding, mm -hmm. it will be difficult for a third party to meddle. Even your parents, it will be difficult for them to meddle, to see your, okay. to see your 
So it will be hard for a third party to divide the relationship. Okay. Now let's go back to our Bibles in Proverbs chapter 24. I thought you would have picked it up. Proverbs 24 verse 3. We read it up on the screen. Guys, media, thank you. Can we have KJV? Okay, we can read this first and get, then we go to KJV. After two with our big, bold voices. Are you ready? Or oh, you're at home? Are you sleeping already? Okay, let's read. One, two, go. Through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established. Wisdom will tell you to put fuel in your car. Okay? And then understanding will tell you that when you are going to move forward, you have to first of all ignite the engine because you understand that has to be done. Okay? But without fuel, nothing happens. Understanding will help the pilot know that even though we are cruising and everything is fine, when there's turbulence, I understand my plane, that this is what I need to do. I need to go higher. Are you, am I speaking to somebody? So, for the main fact that we have, we think we've got it all sorted, my husband loves me, my wife respects me, and we're all goody-goody, we are all lovey-dovey, and everything is fine, we must still understand that fellow. Like Sister Ayo said, every marriage package is different. We can learn from others, like Sister Tina said, and watch movies like I do to learn sometimes, but we also need, I need to filter what comes in to know is it applicable to my husband? There's this story, I don't know if it happened or not, of this man. Actually, I will give my story. Before I got married, I went to learn all sorts of meals in Nigeria, Ogbono, Egosi, some of the things we don't even eat in my house. And then when I got married, guess what? My husband was always eating. Rice and stew. Rice and curry. I went to learn everything. So, all my knowledge, of course not wasted, but then I need to customize by understanding. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody say understanding. Mary and Joseph, from where we read, were already together. They were in courtship, getting ready to be married. They were engaged. But then all of a sudden, Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant. But they never slept together. They never had intimacy. Mary, you're pregnant? Have you been seeing somebody else? You've been cheating? Oh no, I'm not cheating. Joseph, you must believe me. This pregnancy came from heaven. Oh, really? That's the first I've heard. Our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even Sarah, never got pregnant from heaven. How come? But it was true. She saw an angel. The angel appeared and said, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be pregnant. And then she asked, oh, how will I be pregnant? How will it happen? We, I can't have sex with my husband before marriage. Don't worry. The power of the Most High will come on you. And that thing that will be in you will be called the Holy One of the Most High. And then her tummy started growing. Boom. Then she had baby bump. But she was not married. Somebody say mysterious. There was conflict, confusion in her relationship. What did Mary do? Somebody say wisdom. Now, I assume she would have spoken to her husband-to-be and they would have had that nasty argument. And the Bible says that Joseph decided to call off their engagement, their marriage. No more. You are a wayward woman. You have not been faithful. And he walked away. She didn't fight. She didn't raise her voice. I assume she would have prayed. She would have said, 
Lord, if indeed you came to me and now I'm pregnant, I've been waiting all my life to be married, have planned this marriage, friends, relatives, so many people already know, now I'm going to be put to shame. If indeed you're in this, can you please speak to Joseph? Somebody say wisdom. That's why the Bible says that a wise woman builds. The Bible also says that the heart of kings is in the hands of God. And like we've heard, the man is the head of the marriage, of every marriage. So if you're going to beckon on the king or appeal to the king, like Chris Hipkins, for example, you can't just go and say, Prime Minister, you need to change this and change. No, no, no. When you go to parliament, they say, where you talk, there are things you can and cannot say. Am I talking to somebody? So don't just badge in on your husband, assuming that he must listen to you because you live in the same house, sleep on the same bed, you cook his food, and you know everything about him. Somebody say it's not possible. Somebody say it's not right. I assume she went to Jesus. She went to God and prayed. And then what happened? Joseph had an encounter. Praise God. For about four years, the Lord told me something. And I kept on speaking to my husband about it. And my husband said, if God has really spoken to you, I am not yet convinced. He has to speak to me too. You know, some women will go, well, God has spoken to me and that's the end of it. I must follow God first. Somebody say God is a God of order. God set up the marriage institution. He cannot reverse it. And that was what happened in the case of Mary and Joseph. Mary heard first. Joseph heard later. And then they came into unity. I want to say this to say that your marriage, there's a purpose for it. If you look at that scripture, it says that this child will be born. And he will be savior. That means their family was set up to change generations. Your home, your marriage. If you're not yet married, you're single. The person you're going to get married to will be set up to change lives. Somebody say the bigger picture. Somebody say it's not just about me. So Mary saw that it wasn't just about that. Give me seven minutes more, I'll finish. Praise God. Somebody say, I will be wise. My husband has told me some time ago, he said, when you're doing this and I see that you're not in agreement, I just pray. Somebody said, there's no need to argue. Somebody said, there's no need to fight. So he just goes to God and prays and he says, God, this is what's happening. But he could also say, I'm the man, and this is it. There are times he does that, and we follow. But there are times he also goes, let's talk. There are times he also prays. Shout hallelujah. Somebody say wisdom. Communication. Today, you know, on our pathway, we have healthy marriage uncovered. How can you have a healthy relationship? Number one, communication. Clear communication. Speak for somebody else to understand you. Not just out of your hurt. When I was a lot younger, I used to do that a lot. I'm very hurt. I'm very angry and I'll say everything. The Bible says a fool says everything in his heart. Women, we do this a lot. We like to talk. I say it. We like to talk. I just must talk because you know you don't have anything else to get at the man so you must talk. Somebody say I'm changing. Somebody say, I will change for the better. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's not be foolish. Let's be wise. There's internal communication between yourselves. And there are times to communicate. When the man or the woman is not in a good mood, that's not, when to, that's not the time to bring up all the myriads of faults and you did this 10 years ago and you did that. Again, when I'm talking, I'm talking from experience because I have done it a lot. 
That was what you did in 2016. And you know, sometimes we know how to record things properly, right? Even to the dates, sometimes. Somebody say, no more. There's internal communication. When can you communicate with the person? When should you? When should you not? Amen. Because there are kids here, there are some things I won't say. But a very one of the good times you can talk or give requests is, especially for the African man, give them a very nice meal. Give them what they like. Give them some bit of tender love and care. I guess that applies to every man. Amen. And when you see that the king is in a good mood, in a, not when there's no money, Amen. If he has just crashed the car, don't go, oh, you crashed the car and start nagging. No. S offer some help. Same goes to the man. Praise God. Somebody say, I will change. I will communicate for the better. That's internal communication. Now, there's the external. Impute into your marriage. We see the story of Joseph and Mary. Who spoke to Mary? An angel. If we look at the story of Adam and Eve, who spoke to Eve? The serpent. So every action or inaction in your relationship has a source. When your husband or wife or the person you're going to get married to is saying something, find the source. Is it God or the enemy? Eve could not discern that it was the devil that was speaking to her. The whole world could have been blessed through them, but we got cursed from them. But Mary and Joseph decided to listen to the communication of heaven. Praise God. Somebody lift up your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, open my ears to understand and to hear the communication of heaven. From today, in the name of Jesus. A lot of people hear the communication from the enemy. That's why there's confusion. That's where the, why there's anarchy. That's why there are so many problems in marriages. The Bible says, I sought for a man to stand in the gap. God needs just one person to stand for your relationship. And everything will turn around for the positive. Can I have an amen? So, but when your husband or wife is going the wrong way, and you're like, he's not treating me right, right I'm going to do the same. You're calling for trouble. You're calling for more division. You're calling for irreconcilable differences. But the Bible says, do not pay evil with evil, but rather pay evil with good. The story I'm going to refer you to is Beauty and the Beast. It's Disney cartoon. It's for children. But there are lots of lessons to learn from that cartoon. And I say it again and again. Except that person is really wicked and mean. When love is shown, there's a change. When genuine love is displayed to the other person, there will be a change. But what happens many times is that we're not patient enough. Somebody say, I will be patient. So the story today and the lesson today is that your relationship is beyond just you. God has a plan and a purpose for you, for your wife, for your marriage. And that purpose is bigger than you and your children. It extends to generations and communities. Can you imagine if God forbid my husband and I were already apart? Maybe we will not be here today. Part of the plan of God for us was to have this. That means you and you and you and you that are connected to our destinies, what we're supposed to do as a family for you, we will not be able to do it. That means we cut off, interrupt, the plan of heaven. Somebody say it's beyond me. So Mary was wise. Eve was foolish. Before taking that decision, she knew they shouldn't eat it. She should have gone back to the men and said, what do you think? Can I touch that tree? But she went 
all by herself. And that's the generation of today where we have extreme independence. I can do whatever I like, anytime and anyhow. Somebody say, no more. So from today, please, I want to ask us, communicate. You may be angry and it's justified when you're not happy. But try as much as possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask for grace to have self-control. And find a nice time to communicate. Apply wisdom when communicating. One thing you should learn is this. When you are communicating about the wrongs they have done to you, don't say, you did this to me. You did that to me. Naturally, they're going to be defensive. Somebody say defensive. Now, how you should pass on the message is, what you did made me feel like this. Because what you are thinking may not actually be their intention. But what you did made me feel like this. Is there an explanation? I'm not very happy about that. And then the response will be different from when you go, you did this. You did that. Am I talking to somebody? Let's jump onto our feet and pray. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Give me an encounter with you that will change my life, my family, my generation positively. Positively. An encounter. Lord Jesus, I want an encounter with you that will change me positively. That will transform my family, transform my children and children's children. Even though I don't know whether I'm going to have children or not. But Father, give me an encounter. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Open my eyes to see the plans that you have for my family and I. And help me to understand them. Help me to see the plans that you have for us. Help me to see the bigger picture, Father. I don't want to be myopic in my view of life. Open my eyes, my understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Last of all, the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. That gives to all men, or he gives to everyone that asks. Everyone that asks. Somebody say everyone. So if you ask for wisdom, he will give you wisdom. That was what Solomon asked for. He said, give me wisdom that I may rule these people. Somebody say wisdom. Lift your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, give me wisdom. Wisdom for profiting. Wisdom for managing relationships. Wisdom for my academics, for my job, for my business. Wisdom in relationship. Wisdom for handling my husband, my children. Wisdom, wisdom for leadership. Father, baptize me with the grace for wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom that I will have more understanding than my teachers. Wisdom, oh God. Give us wisdom. Give our wisdom, our women wisdom, our men wisdom. In the name of Jesus, we will not be foolish, Father. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we thank you. We know you've heard us. We know you've answered. This week, I decree supernatural encounters that will cause you to change the course of your generations for good in the name of Jesus. I speak life and wisdom over you in the name of Jesus. Wherever there has been pain because of lack of wisdom, Father, we plead for mercy and we ask for a redirection. In the name of Jesus, wherever there's chaos, wherever there's trouble in those homes, Father, visit those foundations. The Bible says Jesus was passing through Jericho. He saw Zacchaeus and he visited his house and said, today, salvation is coming to your house. Father, I pray for every home that is suffering right now. Jesus, pass through those homes. Pass through those relationships in the name of Jesus. And overall, like Mary, Father, help us to go down on our knees and pray when we don't have solutions to the problems. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus and shout hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I need to stretch our hand to her right now. Let us thank God for using her for us this morning. Let us thank God that her God will continue to use her. God will continue to our light will continue to shine in the mighty name of Jesus. The wisdom on our life will continue to grow in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything she lay her hands on shall prosper. And all our marriages will be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for everything you've started and what you're going to complete, oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen. Are we ready for our confessions this morning? In three, two, one, let's go. This is my march of jubilation and advancement. My destiny will never lack evidence and things will become easy for me to achieve. I am established on the mountain of visibility. I am set high above all nations of the world. Amen. I am a super wonder as I prosper in everything I do. Every yoke of average and not enough has been completely broken in my life. I am indeed the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let us share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed week, guys. Stay blessed.